Hey guys, it's me Charlie. This is a video on my Oxalotl breeding pair. As you can see here, I have my male and my female. And the male and female are about maybe a year old now. And they're at a breedable age. But um, my male hasn't been eating um, as much. And the female has. And so um, I need to fatten him up more. So I need the temperature to be a little bit warmer. So probably that will stimulate him for to eat more and to breed. But I think it's because he's chasing after the girl a lot. They get along really, really well. They don't fight. They don't disagree or nothing. They just get along great. And I'll put my hand in here so you can get an idea how big he is. So his tail's back here. There's the tip of my finger and my hand. And I'm only about uh, two inches down uh, above the water. So it's not an illusion. But this is a big male. You can see my hand in there. And there's his tail. Here's the female. And I put him in this um, plastic tub just so I can clean their tank a little bit. They've never really given me any problems. They're really nice. But I'm always freaked out about them, so I usually don't touch them. Especially at feeding time. Sometimes I feed them and the way they suck food down just freaks me out. But um, as soon as I get them a little bit chubbier, then I'll go ahead and get them set up for breeding in a 10-gallon aquarium. So I have them in this because I need to get them another 10-gallon aquarium. Um, I keep just a breeding pair if I want a small enclosure. Really, the best um, the best size for an oxalato from what I've read is a 10-gallon aquarium is, is just roomy enough for one oxalato. But if you do have a pair and that's all you have, then a 10-gallon aquarium is okay. But if you have um, more, like a 15-gallon long or 29-gallon long, a 55-gallon would be fantastic. But anything like that would be really good for them. Just because it'll keep them interested in scavenging around and looking for food. And if you have large, smooth rock, like a river rock inside your fish tank, you can go ahead and put it in there so they can kind of push through and dig. If you use sand, same thing. They can put their little fingers through. Um, lots of hiding places. But in order to breed these guys, um, from the research I've done, um, make sure their temperature is, uh, is not so cold and not too hot. Um, just a good temperature that would be um, probably when you stick your hand inside the water. It just feels kind of cool. And um, I forgot the, the temperature degrees exactly, so you'll have to um, wait until like a bubble pops up on the screen to show you uh, the temperatures. But... Um, Putting a lot of plastic plants with large leaves or even real plants. Uh, real plants probably would be better because it does help with um, oxygen and it also helps with the water clarity. And um, putting in plastic plants, you know, the female will actually rub her body against the female or against the plant and start to lay her eggs everywhere. And um, from what I understand, uh, you need to probably put a smooth stone, something like a, a large river stone or just a small medium size like maybe around two inches so that way the male can release his pocket of sperm and the female can go over it and do what she has to do in order to have fertile eggs but um these guys are really lucky because uh, my female here i don't know if you could see it in the video very well but she's got pure black eyes a nice smooth white body and her gills are red the male is actually a wild type so he's got like a leopard colored looking body See how pretty that is, except the light's kind of glaring at it. And his gills are actually red. And um, in this light, you can't really see the true colors. I might have to do their video one day out in the sun so you guys can see the real colors. Because fluorescent lighting and incandescent lighting doesn't really show the real color of the, of the oxalotls. Um, keeping oxalotls are really easy. They're kind of exotic, but a lot of people think they're weird looking. But... Um, I think they're really cool, so it'd be a good, good um, pet to keep that are low maintenance. So if anybody has any questions or comments that they would like to leave below about oxalotls, I didn't cover very much. I did something very basic, but please leave a comment below. And um, remember, all of us we care for our pets in different ways, and they may not be a hundred percent exactly the way they're supposed to be done. But as long as the pet is healthy, happy, 
and doing really well. Um, I think that's all that matters. We all have different methods of keeping our oxalotls. So don't forget to rate the video if you'd like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Oh yeah, they don't have a name. Why don't you guys name them?